Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Level Up Podcast. Um, this is Sanab and coming back after a long time again. Um, but we're talking about something that's very important to all of us, and you've probably all thought about it for a long time, uh, whether it be in our academic lives or wherever we are, um, either working or anything. It's to do with productivity. So we all have, you know, moments where we've been procrastinating and, and um, you know, studying or revising feels hard and it, you might not be in the right motion or uh, you don't feel like you're in a groove of understanding concepts and um, enjoying the process of productivity. But that's what we're going to discuss today. So, Sunav, do you want to take it forward with the first Yeah, and just to like contextualize it, like we've just completed our examination so we thought it was also relevant to make this episode uh and like uh to be honest we didn't use all these techniques but i mean we tried to use them as much as we could um but yeah so i think the first thing is to understand uh the fact that productivity and like okay this is um like for some more context, we both have seen this guy named uh, Ali Abdal on YouTube and like other YouTubers yeah. like that, like brilliant YouTubers who actually dedicate like a lot of time to researching and learning. So we'll definitely to, recommend watching. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So we've just tried to, I guess, compile all of their work or not, okay, not all of their work, of course, but a lot of their research on productivity itself, because yeah. again, it's a relevant topic, right? So the first thing um, that we saw was that all of them gave very interesting and actually helpful and scientifically backed tips about uh, productivity and like what it means. And like, firstly, okay, firstly, wait, before we even begin on like techniques, which is what we thought we would start with, uh, Aryan, why don't you start with, I mean, it's not to make it like a presentation or like a cliche uh, podcast or whatever, but why don't you start with like, what productivity is because right because it's not just uh i guess like just studying it's not like in what is productivity to you okay for me productivity is a concept that um basically encompasses how how you work when you work and um how effectively you work yeah, yeah. um basically it to me there are times that i allocate to my productivity okay there are times that i feel i'm productive the times i feel i procrastinate the times i feel entertained and i have fun productivity is basically to me how much work i can complete in the least amount of time in the most effective way possible without me losing focus or interest while doing that process Absolutely. Um, an example could be um you know studying for an exam and using the pomodoro technique which is 25 minutes each um you know for your concentration concentration span of like um you know kind of studying for 25 minutes taking a five minute break and doing whatever you want to like and whatever you like the most so then you don't lose focus completely and then going back to studying until you yeah. get the concept so it's whatever technique you find the most you know uh kind of valuable and what works for you the best exactly that's- i think i think that's like the a huge point which a lot of people neglect like they just hear or Pomodoro technique or 90 minute work sessions based on like deep work, but they don't like, they just hear it and they think, okay, this is it. And this is going to be universal. And this is going to apply to every single person in every single scenario. But I think that's one thing that's not like often discussed, right? Like the fact that these productivity techniques or ways to be productive are just methods that you try out, right? Like it's like a diet, for example, like if we have a keto diet, you won't know if it actually works for you unless you've tried it. Unless, of course, you exactly. have like a genetic test or whatever. But the point is, we don't have that. So unless you've exactly tried out these techniques, you don't know what works for you. So take everything we say with a pinch of salt because it comes with the bias of what works for us, right? Yeah. And um, it's a very personalized thing. Exactly. So okay. So I'll start off with uh, a few things. So I think the first thing is. One idea which I personally find extremely interesting and valuable, which is the idea of new of deep work. So this this idea was popularized by this guy named Cal Newport, uh, of course, a very famous author. Written he wrote the book Deep Work. Um, 
he basically states that like we as human beings have the capability to focus like to have very intensely focused sessions of 90 minutes of 90 minute durations about only like if you're lucky three times a day which is a lot like imagine like you know those phases where you have like a lot of work to complete but and and like a lot of deadlines as well so you just grind it out for 90 minutes right those 90 minutes are probably deep work but the point is you do that only when you really really have to and not when you uh, like should be doing it as well right so he says yeah. if you build the discipline of deep work you have the ability to gain new skills and learn new information faster and better than the majority of the population, which automatically puts you ahead of everything. Right? And so I just like that. Yeah. I like to add one thing from like personal experience, right? When I hear 90 minutes of work, like deep work, um, I think that's a, that's, you know, a long time personally, because um, if it feels like it, it might be like a really long time to just do one thing focused, but the point to keep in mind here is everything around you when you're working is counted as a distraction and can like the point is distractions can make that 90 minutes feel like forever. Right. Mm -hmm. So cre what's really important. And we've talked about this before is in your environment. Um, I suggest having a, a work environment that's different from your sleeping environment or something that you kind of, have for your own entertainment something a, a space that you use only for working you keep your phone aside any distractions that you might feel that you know turn uh, like put you off while working uh, take that out completely deep work means you have to be completely focused on what you're doing um no other distractions around you so you know with keeping distraction in mind that that's what sunav is talking talking about for yeah. deep work absolutely i think um like okay, so deep work is one concept but i'd like to move to another thing before we get started on the actual techniques because i feel that this is something that a lot of people neglect the the fact that so we all try to be productive in order in order to either learn or create something right or yeah. like a lot of people like want to just study which i mean is technically learning but then a lot of people don't consider it learning because they're just like i guess um mugging like a bunch of information up just for the sake of writing an examination but i think there's something called bloom's taxonomy um i don't know if a lot of people have heard of it but basically this is that um so you so um you'll try and okay, so you can just search this up so the thing is that uh there are different levels which establish a hierarchy of learning right and it's meant to be read from bottom to top, right? So the first thing is remember, right? So if you remember something, you're just able to recall facts and basic concepts, which you can define, duplicate, and like list, memorize, repeat, state, right? Yeah. The next thing is you understand something. That's the next level of learning um, in, in which you explain ideas or concepts, um, and yeah. then you can apply that, which is the next level of understanding or learning in this case, uh, where you use that information in new situations. Right? And uh, I don't know, this is just a weird observation, but if you see a lot of like school systems um, to like act modern, I guess, they, they've they moved from like the most basic level to a higher level. I believe that like that's the way it should be. For example, um, like, I mean, from what we heard from our parents in like in India, the uh, education system of like state boards and CBSC, uh, which is the national board, uh, is mainly or primarily about like memorizing and like rote learning, which is just memorizing, right? So that's like the first level, which is remembering. And after that, like the other one went to like ICSC, which was like understanding, which is the next level. And now you have like international, international boards like IV and IGCSE. Or like a levels which focus on application yeah application yeah. right and i mean yes that is an element of understanding of uh, sorry uh, memorizing and understanding but it tries to move towards uh, applying and i believe that like the coolest uh, forms of education are in those higher levels right the higher yeah in the yeah. higher right yeah yeah so the next level is analyzing which is drawing connections among ideas right so you have various like 
knowledge data sets. Yeah. But uh, like, for example, you have something on, uh, I don't know, like something from literature and you have another thing from mathematics, the way you analyze and draw connections between them, that's like another, a higher level. And then you have evaluation, right? Honestly, even like, I believe IB also tries to achieve this emphasis on tries, but yeah, they evaluate, which means that uh, they justify a stance or decision. So they like weigh and argue and critique um, various standpoints on a certain topic or uh, topic or concept. Yeah. And the final level yeah. is creation. Because if you think about it, I mean, this makes a lot of sense. If you you can only create something of actual value once you have a complete and true understanding of something, right? So if you can only create something if you've learned it already. If you've learned it fully. Yeah. And, you know, there's this um, quote, I think it's by Einstein. Um, you know, what makes a really good teacher is that he's, if he's able to explain a really difficult concept to a first grader, mm -hmm. and at first it might seem like a really simple thing, right? But to explain a concept like astrophysics, for example, to a first grader, you need to simplify it to the max, okay? Simplify it um, and make it digestible. So that's that's why you, in this hierarchy, first thing is, you know, remembering the information. So if it if you make it interesting, if you make the information interesting for yourself, you'll be able to remember it easier, okay? Yeah. Second thing, to understand it, if you, if you simplify it, if you dumb it down to a version that, that you can understand and then, you know, um, build it on that, it becomes easier to un to comprehend and with easier comprehension, you can apply it because from that first fundamental roots that you've learned from that knowledge, applying it just means expanding and branching out from that fundamental thing. So you're just gaining more knowledge in that case. And then when you start to go into the more uh, deeper, you know, levels of it where you not only uh, like analyze every aspect of it, and uh, think it through and through, but you also form an opinion on it, uh, you based on that, that's when you've truly understood what the concept is. And when you create and, and synthesize new information based on what you've just learned, that is when innovation begins. Exactly. So, and I think, I think a lot of people might be like wondering, like, how does this link back to productivity? So I think now when we go into the techniques, we're going to try and refer to Bloom's taxonomy, which is the hierarchy that we just explained, right? Um, and talk about it in relation to these different productivity techniques, because I truly do believe it does link it. So firstly, I think the biggest um, the biggest te like technique or tip that we've heard, or the two biggest techniques that we've heard, is something called spaced repetition and active recall. So to explain each of them, um, so spaced repetition is essentially the idea that if I've revised, let's say, um, cell biology today, right, I need to revise it one more time tomorrow, then maybe another time three days from now, then maybe next week, and maybe the week after that, only after which I would have repeated it enough with enough gap and duration between each repetition to have actually stored it in my long-term memory uh, and remembered it and rehearsed it enough so that it stays for long enough, right? So, so I think key, this is, yeah. So the key in this is just looking at the words spaced and repetition, okay? If you take something like repetition on itself, um, repetition is just consistency. But if you, ha if, if you do it enough, in, if you do it enough times, you'll understand the concept, but you can't do it too much because you also lose interest and it just becomes mundane and boring and monotonous you don't want to continue doing that and if, if you take space by itself you have you take long periods of time to just like uh to revise or you take you probably don't you know don't do revision let's say you want to do your math um and you want to study for math you just procrastinate and don't do it there has to be a good amount of spacing so when you bring both of these together you have a, a like a good picture like you take one topic you put enough space in between it so you don't lose interest but you also repeat it consistently so you get the idea of the whole concept itself yeah, yeah. absolutely i think like uh yeah that's that's perfectly right like you can't repeat something like i mean 
by if you just repeat something, then it also justifies someone just revising the same thing like ten thousand times or like hundred times before an exam, like right before an exam. But that's not what's effective. What is effective is spaced repetition. So doing the same thing maybe like five times over the course of five weeks, but uh, revising it, revising the same thing over the course of five weeks with appropriate space between them, right? The next thing is active recall, which is what actually links to Bloom's taxonomy. So active recall um, goes a step beyond uh, beyond understanding as well. Uh, so of course it covers remembering because recall, right? You're recalling it. Yeah. And the, it goes ahead like to the next step as well, which is understanding. And the reason uh, why this is, is because uh, you active recall is let's say i've written my notes someone um who's just trying to memorize it for the sake of it would just read the notes over and over again but that's passive learning they're not actually like remembering it they're just they just think they're remembering it because they're reading it again and they're like oh yeah i remember this but um if you actually challenge yourself and you you don't refer to your notes you're doing something called active recall and like oh wait what was that specific organelle from the cell that serves this function, oh, wait, it was this, right? So you're serving that uh, function of active recall. And yeah, the next point is, uh, and yeah, this, so this, in order to do active recall, you need to have understood the concept, which is why it goes up in the hierarchy. Of yeah. Those text on. Just make it easier to recall in the future. That's basically it. Yeah. Mm. Um, the next thing, which, okay, this does not necessarily relate to Bloom's taxonomy, but are you, do you like to talk about, uh, like taking breaks and like taking breaks in order to maintain focus that we were talking about deep work earlier and, right. and all that. So they all also emphasize on breaks, right? Why do you think? So, that? so just like in fitness, right. Um, to, to have to, for your muscle growth, um, recovery is equally as important as hypertrophy and, and exercising and, you know, the growth of your muscle. It's, it, it requires recovery. Um, exercise requires recovery for the muscle to grow the same way your brain requires rest to take in the information that you've just collected and, um, use it obviously, um, and understand it because if you load your brain with too much information in a short span of time, if you take too long to learn multiple concepts it's just gonna get you confused and you're not gonna understand it very well um your brain is obviously has a limit to how much it can recall uh, capacities vary from different people but it's it's important to take a rest okay there's this one study that that explained how um there were soldiers right um just before you sleep you remember the most amount of things okay you know through the rem cycle you go that's uh, going through that cycle um key, like gets you uh, ca kind of categorizes the information that you've learned and keeps it uh, stored in your mind and on, like it goes through the files of your brain when you sleep right so um you know when soldiers had had gone uh, and experienced a war when they came back they had you know obviously been through sh shell shock and things that terrified them that could scar them for lives so they were told not to sleep for a whole day because if they slept yeah right afterwards they would have they would have remembered everything and it would have uh, messed with their minds and it would have been a traumatic experience but if they did because they didn't sleep a whole day um because they didn't give their brain that rest um they took away the ability to you know recall everything that had just gone by and it became a lot easier to forget and that's yeah. tying that back into working if you take the right amount of rest between the right amount of time that you spend studying that also depends on yourself um you basically learn understand apply uh, and just like recollect a lot more than you would usually um and it's very effective that way um, yeah i think that was actually very well said like I, I didn't know the example about the soldier thing but that's actually very cool like i yeah. I mean, yeah, that like perfectly answers the importance of recovery in this case, like or rest, right? So, I think one more thing, uh, Arun, I think I want to discuss, which we've written down like in our notes, but I think I haven't thought about it enough. It says mm -hmm. 
when you are studying, assume you're wrong. Why do you think so? Okay. Um, I mean, it, when I'm talking about physics, right, everything is falsifiable. Um, so the core concept behind science is that every concept is falsifiable and there is no real fact to it, even though physics is a fact-based thing. Um, I feel when you're talking about, you know, this in specific, I feel when you say every answer that you have is wrong, you're kind of you're kind of posing an argument where, okay, you have this information, but if you can question that information, that's when you get the most understanding of the whole concept. Yeah, like, I was like it's like if you say you're wrong like let's say let's say okay let's say you do something you actually get it right like let's say you solve a math problem you actually get it right but you assume you're wrong i think what that does is that really makes you like like actually attentively think back and relook at it and be like am i actually wrong like where could i have gone wrong like, question am I, what you just got yeah, yeah. like if if this is wrong where did i go wrong I think in that way, you also do try and minimize where you do go wrong, which obviously increases the effectiveness of your studying and your productive session because you're thereby making sure you make less mistakes, right? This is where analysis comes in. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And if you see, and you're applying your understanding. So we've literally, like these few methods have gone from remembering which was which we used in space repetition in basic, to understanding yeah. which was necessary in active recall to applying and analyzing in um, questioning arguing in assuming you're wrong and that's yeah. also that also kind of covers evaluation evaluation yeah because you're forming yeah. your own opinion in a way mm-hmm. but yeah yeah and i think i think one more thing with um which is not very relevant. I just wanted to talk about like about productivity in general, right? I think one thing that a lot of people don't understand and since our channel is like after all about fitness, I think it perfectly links back to that. I think our brain does truly work like a muscle in the sense that it requires progressive overload and consistency. And I think that's yes. uh, like progress oh sorry uh consistency is reiterated by the study technique of space repetition but i think progressive overload is not necessarily spoken about too much so it's like if you know you're capable of doing uh an easy question in mathematics you can do okay let's say you can do five easy questions uh within half an hour right i mean that's a very hypothetical situation you should be able to do more but uh five easy questions within half an hour then the next session when you study, I think if you try to do, let's say, three easy questions and two medium questions in the same amount of time, you're challenging yourself and bettering the outcome. And then eventually you can build it up to, let's say, five hard questions or five very hard questions in half an hour. And I think that only comes with consistency and consistent progressive. Oh. Right? And I think the brain does truly work like that. But I mean... Then again, you have to, like linking back to one of the points that we said in the beginning of this podcast episode, um, you really have to figure it out for yourself, right? Like my rate of progressive overload of my brain may be much slower than someone else's. And it's not even, uh, like a lot of people might find it funny, oh, like he's smart or he's not as smart, but but it's, no, but it genuinely is like what does work for you, right? And yeah. if you do what works for you, then at the end of the day, like there is no issue. Like for example, like Sunov here, um, he's a study hound. Like bro, he goes like crazy. He actually, oh, okay. he studies for a long time without getting distracted at all, which I find really impressive. In my case, I I require longer breaks because I get you know distracted quite easily, and I I feel like um I lose my interest pretty quickly and my attention span does need working on but um, that way I've kind of understood myself to a point where I know how how effectively I can work so that's yeah. also important like you don't have to compare with anyone else but um, and you don't have to like share this um, to any like share saying that you know um, I you know take a longer time this is for yourself once you understand every parameter that you go through um, you know, your own body chemistry and how your body clock works throughout the day 
you can figure out how you work best and it doesn't have to be just academically it could be physically as well in the gym um yeah. wherever you're working it's just productivity um has to be through your own mind and body and yeah. no one else. that's yeah and exactly like, uh, like just to de-emphasize on the individual of customization of such like study of productivity routines i think like let's just bring out the same example like i do truly pers- like believe that for me studying like in 90 minute sessions or at least one hour is way better than studying for like less time and then taking a break because i just feel like uh, to be honest it's just like i have this mindset that like when i'm done like when i do a good 90 minute thing then yeah fine i'm done and then i can like chill or what i can do whatever I, whatever else i want to do but like and i wouldn't like to, like to extend it for longer but the thing is that and and the thing is that aryan might not agree with that for himself right and there's no issue with that because if it works for him it works for him and if it works for me it works for me there's no yeah. like greater than the other option it's just again one like up to one's personal preference so yeah that's one more thing i wanted to um like really emphasize on because i truly do think it's probably one of the biggest takeaways from like all these productivity gurus or what not okay um i'd like to you know kind of conclude or or um, bring up like a few final kind of tips or suggestions to, in the form of questions i, I want to ask you sonak hmm. uh, so obviously through the pandemic we've been like obviously we've been introduced to, to through di- two digital tools for like the longest time but through the pandemic we've actually utilized them really well um w- what are some apps or things that you could recommend for productivity not only that what 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 do you think are the advantages of digital um you know tools in the for, in productivity yeah i think uh, firstly digital tools like as you said are very helpful a few tools that i would recommend are, is notion which is like one thing that we use a lot and like google calendar like just to track what you're doing when you're doing and uh, under notion like just organize like i think notion is more important for organizing google calendar is just for knowing when you're doing what you're doing and i think the third thing which is it's it's a little different from these two but it's more specific to studying as a subcategory of being productive um it's like the tool of flashcards which i think flashcards are a brilliant like device for people to do or to perform active recall and the reason for that is that you have the question or the concept on the front and then you think okay and you think and you maybe say out loud to a friend uh, okay let's say the topic is again cell biology because i can't think of anything else and you go to the back okay fine there's uh, what are the cell organelles uh, what are the cell organelles and then you like just list them all out to your friend okay the mitochondria nucleus cytoplasm right oh no, wait that's not an organ okay but uh, anyways um like the point is that you list them all out and then you turn the flashcard and you look at it and you're like okay was i right or wrong and then when you see that okay let's say yeah see I was, let's say i was wrong about the cytoplasm thing i'm like oh well okay now next time i'll remember that and next time you actually might remember that so i think yeah that's one digital tool that i really do recommend or find helpful for um yeah for all of these uh studying sessions i guess so yeah um one final question for you audio yeah how do you think um like in with digital um technology also comes a lot of distractions right yeah could you just emphasize on the importance of getting rid of these distractions and how one may do so okay so um there are obviously simple options right so let's say you have a phone i'm assuming you all do um when you're working and you have your phone next to you chances are you might get random notifications popping up on uh, instagram you know um something just duolingo might pop up even if it's, if it, if it's if you're doing something else and you're just like oh duolingo might be productive whatever uh, if you're doing focused work or like digital distractions in the form of notifications you know um be like friends maybe wanting to communicate with you with you you take that out it's 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 completely 
folk like if you're trying to do deep focused work um you know there's a lot like di- digital media is all about communication okay there's so, so much you can do so much like there's so many forums out there that you can ask questions uh, about you know get answers from and things like that um but there's also you know scope for getting distracted because there's too much R- really there is a lot okay and there's a lot of internet junk that you might get sucked into and the whole the, the point is um the easiest way okay i'm giving you simple tips that you can just apply keep your phone in another room um so it's completely away from you when you're doing your deep focus work um close all other tabs or whatever other than what you're focusing on because if you see the youtube tab pop up in, in the thing you might just want to click on it and watch a video right. in between and and it ruins your whole flow right so you want to keep the flow going um you know make make your setup digitally more productive so if you if you like um to listen to music while you work that's perfectly fine if that makes you work better that's perfectly fine um if you find yeah, it distracting once again whatever works for you right whatever works for you and um you know just make it personalized take off things that you might feel like will take you away from the flow that's exactly. my advice yeah i agree yeah i mean i think that's about it like productivity is it's i mean we've said this a lot of times but that's because it's probably the most important point it's a very personalized thing yeah. and it's all about making your time as effective as it can be so exactly. whether it be whether it be using the techniques that we gave you or something else that you find the point of this episode was just to i guess share our experiences and let's see like how well it works out with the results but i mean whatever happens like i think i did i was actually more productive because i was able to do more in less time yeah but yeah let's see Wait, so now this has been a pretty productive uh podcast, hasn't it? Yeah. Because we yeah, and we we not only understood we, the topic of productivity, created. we created, we analyzed it, and we we simplified it for you guys. So this is live proof that is possible. Okay? Exactly. And literally, and if you noticed, create creating was the only thing on the Bloom's taxonomy we did not cover through the techniques and. but we did cover it through live demonstration so hopefully yeah. this satisfies something uh and we hope to see you guys here next time see ya you guys